Okay. I think that Kumara wants to say something. Yes, please. Yes, Kumara, we cannot hear you. If not Kumara, Zinena. Okay, or Wahida? I think uh, I think fun engaging activities are the activities that make the students uh, motivated and uh, attentive at the same time. That's it. Thanks, Wahida, again. So mm -hmm. here, yeah, what do we mean by a fun engaging activity? So on purpose, I did not opt for motivation activity, but I selected the term engaging because here we can talk about two concepts which are uh, motivation and engagement motivation and engagement we can motivate our learners but the most important is we should engage our learners why because motivation as a definition you motivate students today because you give them chocolate or you said very good job a positive feedback they feel motivated but after three or five or ten minutes they may not be motivated or the coming days may not be motivated so motivation is temporary motivation is temporary now engagement engagement is everlasting because engagement brings the three parts of the body the mind the heart and the hand which is working the mind the heart and the hands and students will become very loyal to you when you engage them so for me engagement is much better than motivation and when we talk about fun in general fun activities which means it's an activity that has two there is fun and there is a purpose i underline the term purpose when you are using a fun engaging activity you should ask yourself the first question what's the purpose behind using this activity if you tell me that i'm going to use the fun engaged activity just for fun i'm gonna say i'm sorry this is not teaching we are not teaching for fun we are teaching for fun but behind fun there is learning the purpose is learning okay great the next slide now another question why another very important question why do teachers use fun engaging games in EFI classes you are talking about the reasons any volunteers okay let me read some of the comments on the chat thread well musa is saying that then there's always a purpose okay um Jamal is saying hand hands and brain okay muhammad is saying games and interactive activities uh, Jens is saying that because fun creates a relaxed atmosphere, Kumara say that it draws the attention of students. Tyler is asking a question here. How do you make lessons fun and engaging in EFA classes? OK, we are going to answer this question. Jens again is saying that students are more likely to retain the information in their long term memory. And Rajini is saying that to free learners' boldness, okay? And Locke said that to make students learn in comfortable and happy ways so that they can remember better. Great. I'm receiving nice comments here. Please keep them coming. Uh, Ryan, okay, saying because it shows aspects of students that do not appear in normal methods. Okay. And Rita is saying that so as to make the content more interesting, working on the technique is very important than to be given plan con 
plain content. Okay. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I really like the, I mean, the, the idea, the reason behind using um, fun, engaging games in AP class. So let's see here the next slide. What are the reasons behind that? So here, number one that I consider is like a welcome break. When you teach learners every time the same pattern, the same level, the white board, the, um, the, 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 the marker, students open their books, the same way of teaching. Students feel bored. Now we can provide them with a break and this break, let's have some fun. But behind fun, there is learning. This is number one. Number two, motivation. Yes, students feel motivated when they play games. And here I'm not talking only with children and juniors, but also with adults. They like having fun in your classes. And one of the best characteristics of educators are those who are having a sense of humor. So it's good to use games in your classes for the sake of motivating your learners. Number three, self-esteem. Students feel confident. They regain their self-confidence and they feel confident. Why? Because they are working in groups. There is fun and the atmosphere is very nice. It's very interesting. There is an enjoyable learning environment. Great. And the most important why we use games, which is interaction. Interaction for the sake or for the purpose of communication, because we want our learners to communicate, because sometimes your students feel shy or they feel embarrassed. But when you put them into groups and when there is fun, when there is or when there are games, they feel at ease, they feel motivated, there is self-esteem and there is interaction between slow learners, fast learners, shy students, etc. Okay. This the, these are, uh, I mean, the reasons behind using games in EFL classes. And what, um, I mean, the, our participants have just mentioned, these are other very interesting reasons. Okay, so no comments so far about the major four reasons. No, I think that we can carry on, Fasi. Thank you. So let's move on to the next slide. Great. Another very interesting question again. How? How to use fun games in EP classes? I have observed many times when I attended some classes, um, I observed that some teachers um, used very interesting games, but the game turned to be chaos, to be disorder, to be a lot of troubles. And here, the question we should ask ourselves is, I have got the game, very nice game, very motivating game, but the most important is how to use it in my classes. You take into account, do you have a small size class or a big size? Do you have small numbers or uh, I mean a large class, a lot of students in, in the class. Are you teaching children, juniors, adults? Are you teaching mixed ability classes? These are very interesting questions you have to take into account. When you ask, how can I use it? Now, it's the question for you. How to use fun games in EFE classes? Any volunteer? Okay, let's see if we have someone who wants to speak. Yeah, I can see Wahida. She's raising her, her hand. Yes, Wahida, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, I think to use uh, fun games in EFL or ESL classes is first to look for the, the appropriate or the good timing to, to, to choose whether it is, uh, it is to be used in the beginning of the class or at the end of the class. Yes, very, very interesting. So time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, OK, Wahida. 
Thank um, you. Thank you. If you don't mind, uh, Hussein, I want to read some of the, the comments here we have in the chat thread. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, so Ryan is saying, given the students the opportunity to create their own teams. Um, Sarah is saying it is depending on the objective of the lesson. And Kumara is saying with the help of puppet and role plays. Okay. Wasim is saying give the students the opportunity to create their own teams. I think at the end of class we should play some games. Okay. Yeah. And though is say that. Um, Okay, he has a question. He said, I want to know how to use games in a big class. Okay, large classes. Uh, Kaid is saying, I guess it depends on the objectives of the lesson to use mixed uh, groups. And Karima is saying that teachers need to vary their classroom activities and techniques. Well, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks. So let's see some tips that will help us to use fun games effectively in our classes. Here, number one, very important again, clarify your objectives. And thank you, some of you mentioned objectives. Whenever you start teaching, you start with your objectives, goals, purposes. So learning plus fun. I want my students to learn the use and the form of the simple pass. I'm going to use this game. So the game is the is just a, a means to have fun. And behind that, there is learning. Number two, of course, you have to give clear instructions. Like what? Rules, time. As Wahida said, timing is important. Mode of work. For example, if you tell students now, we are going to play a game, OK? And I want you to work on it. The instructions are not clear. Number one, what are the rules? Number two, the time, the mode of work. So I want you to work in groups of four. This is the mode of work. You have five minutes. This is the time. The rules. Don't cheat. Don't use Arabic. Don't use any language. If you use it, you are eliminated or minus one. These are the rules. Now, students have got very clear instructions because if you don't provide them with clear, simple, concise instructions, they feel confused and you will play the game and one of the students will de destroy it. Teacher, uh, what, how much time do we need? Teacher, do I have to work alone or with, my, with my partner? They will interrupt you. So please, when playing games, clarify your objectives, Give clear instructions. Number three is my favorite. Don't explain, but demonstrate. Blah, 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 confuse your learners. Don't talk a lot. Don't explain a lot, but demonstrate. How? For example, you can model it. You can, you can invite a student to model the game with the teacher, or you, you can invite two students in front of the board, and they can model the game. Modeling is one of the most important techniques that will help your learners to understand the instructions. And number four, to avoid confusion, to avoid disorder, to avoid troublemakers. What do you have to do? You have to teach them about the use of the magic hand. And my question, do you have any idea? Do you know about this, the magic hand? Have you ever used this before? OK, let's uh, hear from uh, our participants. I can see Lotfi. Lotfi wants to say something. Yeah, hello. Do you hear me? Yes, we do. Go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, all right, since uh, Mr. Hassan is talking about the magic hand, I can only say that the magic hand is very beneficial in terms of what? In terms of like uh, the te the students are talking, all of them, they're working in groups, so they're talking to each other, and then suddenly at a certain moment, you want to like have the um, attention of everybody. So you can just say, 
magic hand and then everyone raises his hand and then everyone knows that when I say magic hand means to be quiet and listen, this, the, the speakers uh, want to say something. The teacher wants to say something and then you have to pay attention to it. That's one of the modes which is uh, the, the it's uh, instead of saying be quiet and you shout, you just say magic hand. That's it. OK, Thank that's you. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. So some call it the magic hand. Others, they say, give me five. We can call it the magic hand or give me five. And give me five. How many fingers do we have? We have five fingers. So each finger stands for something that will help your students be quiet and concentrate on what you say. OK, so let's explain. Number one, what do we have? We have the eyes. Number two, the ears. Number three, the lips. Number four, the mind. And number five, the hands and the feet. So let me repeat. Five elements of the body. The eyes, ears, the lips, the mouth, the mind, the hand, or hands and feet. They, they must be like this. Is my camera? Is my camera clear, by the way? Yes, uh, Ibtisam? Yes, yes, it is clear for me. Great, thank you. So let me show you here for more explanation. Give me five or the magic hand. Now, I teach my learners. When I say give me five like this, which means number one, the eyes on the speaker. The speaker can be the teacher or can be your partner or your colleague, okay? Number two, the ears are listening. Number three, lips are zipped. It means you stop talking. Number five, the hands and the feet are still like this. It's like a soldier. OK, my students have a lot of much fun when I tell them, give me five. OK, and the mind is folks. So my students, I say, please, now I want you to work in groups and they say blah, blah, blah. Okay. There is healthy noise. There is communication. When I say, please keep quiet, some of them are quiet, others are still talking. Please don't talk a lot. Some are talking, some are not talking. It doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. All the time does not work. Now, when I teach them some tips, symbols, five, I just give, say five. In the very beginning, I say, give me five. After one month, five. After another month, I just raise my hand like this. Everyone is quiet. And it works. I did it many times. Before that, I all the time, please don't make a lot of noise. Please keep quiet. Don't talk a lot. Please stop talking. They don't care sometimes. And some groups, they keep quiet, others not. But when I taught them about the magic hand, I said five. And I maintain the eye contact. I have to make sure that everyone is quiet. Then I give the instruction because the instructions you should give must be clear and heard by everyone. Now, another benefit or benefit behind you, the magic hand, is that when there is motivation, how students act? Students are overactive, over motivated. Teacher, we are the winners. Teacher, they were cheating. They want to win the game, OK? They are very motivated. And this is the technique that saves my life in EP classes. Give me five. Stop. Is it clear so far, please? Yes. Yes, it's clear. Good. Listen, give me five, all of you. Give me five. Speaking all the same time, so it, I think it's one hundred percent clear. Yeah. No. Can you? Yeah. Give me five. Good. So when I say to my learners, "Give me five," I maintain that I I stop and I just look at them. I show them that my "Give me five" is very important. Okay. And they all of this stop. Then I start the instruction, and it helps a lot. Why? Because as I said, when you are playing games, you will see in your classes, students 
are very, very, very motivated. And sometimes they don't want to listen to you because they are thinking to win. They are not thinking to learn and they may not listen to you. So give me five would help. OK, shall we move on to the next slide? Yes, yeah, I think we can yes, because I can ahead. see. Thank you. Now, another question. When to use fun games in e classes? And here I can tell that there are five times. Number one, we can use games before presenting a certain structure or material. Before you start your lesson, you want to motivate your learners. You want to engage your learners. You want to create an enjoyable learning environment from the very beginning. So you can start a game. For example, you want to teach grammar and grammar is about um, prepositions. So you can start with a game about prepositions. OK, this is a game before presenting a certain structure or material. Or you can use it after presenting. Now you taught the, the prepositions of place and time. Then you can use a game practice. You can use practice like gap filling or multiple choice answers or complete, or you can use practice having fun or for fun. So after presenting a certain material to see and check students understanding. But here, the majority of teachers opt for using fun games at the end of the lesson. Why? Because they feel Tired. Students feel exhausted. They, they may lose uh, or they may feel bored and you want to motivate them. You can use games as a review of the material at the end of the lesson. So these are the stages on which you can use the games either before or after or at the end of the lesson. OK. So we move on to practice now. The most uh, important part. Yes, please. No questions so far? Um, no, I can see that we don't have questions right now. Great. So um, let's move on. They said that, say that it is very clear. Thank you. Great. So classroom application. Let's practice some of the games that I have chosen. So here, most use fun games or fun engaging games in EFI large classes because some talks about the large classes. And here we have number one, we have couscous game. Number two, lesson and draw. Number three, we have the maestro game. Uh, your microphone is uh, mute. We can see the games on the, on the slide. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Sorry, yeah, do you see the games? Number one, Cuscus. Yeah. yeah. Yes, please. Yes, see them. So that they are games mentioned here Wonderful. on the slide. So these are the major games I can use with my learners in the beginning of the school year, but there are many. Some of them are very common, like um, find someone who, etc. But here I brought, um, I mean here, new games. So let's start with couscous game. OK. So this is Moroccan couscous. And we have Algerian couscous, Tunisian couscous. OK, this by the way, this game I designed it, designed it by myself and it's somehow similar to the star and the cloud game. Now here, let me tell you about the Moroccan culture, which is very similar to Algerian and Tunisians. OK, now in Morocco. When a foreigner comes to Morocco. Number one. We, we do our best to serve him a very traditional meal, which is couscous. So the foreigner is the guest and the family members are welcoming the guest. Now we give, we provide him with couscous and we sit together. 
together. When we sit together, there is what? Of course, there is communication. We communicate. And the most important element in Moroccan culture, we start asking questions. What is your favorite food? Where are you from? Uh, what do you like to do in your free time? So we are eating couscous at the same time. And my family members are asking the foreigner. The foreigner can be American, Spanish, um, British, etc. We are asking questions. And there is interaction. Now, the, the, I mean, the, in, in Morocco, there are several types of couscous. We have couscous with fish, couscous with vegetables, couscous with bread, couscous with meat. And the most Moroccan typical couscous is couscous with seven vegetables. Seven vegetables. Let me explain. Each vegetable, how many? We have seven. Each vegetable stands for an idea about me. Let me explain here. Okay, look here. How many? We have number one, blue. Number two, soccer. Number three, Barcelona. Number four, pizza. Number five, we have number four. Number six, Hussein. And number seven, back preparation. So we have seven words, seven vegetables. They stand for me. Now, when I meet my learners the first time, so I am the foreigner. And my students are the family members. They are going to ask me questions because I don't want to, to introduce myself Traditionally, my name is Hussein. I'm from Morocco. I've been teaching for a couple of years. I'm a trainer, blah, blah, blah. No, no. It's very traditional and there is no interaction. Now, I want to use this game for several reasons. Okay. I ask my students. Now, I want you here. We have seven vegetables, seven words. I want you to ask me a question that the answer is there. So let's practice. Anyone to ask a question or you can write in the chat box. Yes, please. OK, um, can Hussein, let me tell you that you've made many participants feel hungry here. <laughs> About couscous, yeah, it's very delicious. <laughs> so <I'm sorry>. <laughs> and you are very welcome here to Morocco. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, um, someone is asking about number four. And uh, um, they say that what he does, okay. Mo said, Do you like pizza? Gemma is saying, What's your favorite color? Good. My favorite color is blue. Very good job. Yes, my favorite food is pizza. Great. Other question. Okay. Ryan is saying, For how long have you been teaching? No, I'm sorry. It's not the right answer. Okay. Someone said, what is your favorite football uh, club? Very good job. My favorite, uh, I mean, uh, sport or hobby is soccer. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that uh, someone is asking about, okay, we might say, how many brothers do you have? Uh, how many siblings, brothers and sisters? One sister, three brothers. Thank you. Very good question. Okay. Okay, so I saying, what is your name? Yeah, my name is Hussein. So you see, I didn't tell my students my name is Hussein. Students will ask me questions. Great. The last one, back preparation. Okay, we haven't got a question about this point yet. It's very difficult. OK, uh, Kumar is saying, where do you live? But I think we don't have this answer no, on. No, right. it's not Barcelona. It's not the right question. OK. Come on. We still need the last question, participants, about back preparation. And Barcelona. Okay, in Barcelona. Um, Ryan is saying, what is your favorite destination in Spain? Wonderful, thank you. It's Barcelona, my favorite. I like it. Okay. 
And back preparation, let me give you some hints. It's a book. Okay. So it is a book. Yeah. The last question is about a book. Uh, what are you reading? <laughs> no, it's not the right question. What is the title of your favorite book? No, I'm sorry. Uh, have you written any books? Sorry? Sorry. That, who's speaking? Who is speaking? Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't send the message. Uh, the question is, have you written any books? Or you, you, yes, you, you created a book. Thank you. Yes, it's my first book that I wrote for second back students and the name of the book is back preparation wonderful now as you see number one there is interaction between the teacher and students i'm not introducing myself traditionally my learners are not passive my learners are active because they are asking questions number two i'm improving my students guessing because they guess from the seven vegetables and they ask the right question. You see, now let's go back to the most important about this one. Couscous game is used, number one, to enhance students' communication. There is communication between teacher and students. Number two, collaboration. And number three, guessing. Why collaboration, number two? Because once I'm going to finish, I'm going to tell my students to work in pairs. Yes, please. Now, I want you to take a white paper and I want you to draw a circle like Qsariya. It's a, it's a Moroccan traditional plate. And I want you to write seven vegetables, seven words about you. Once you finish, interaction, ask and answer. So here there is communication, collaboration, and guessing skills. Okay, any question? Did you like the game? Yeah, we did. And uh, we did is saying that it is a very creative method to uh, trigger the student's mind. Thank you. And they love so it. The, Thank you. Yeah, this is the first game that I use with my learners because I don't know them and they don't know me. So couscous would help. All right, the next one. Listen and draw. Listen and draw. Now, my learners, I'm going to tell you about the Moroccan culture, and I guess I get it's similar to the Arab culture. Our students tend to speak a lot more than they listen. They don't want to listen. So when there is a student giving a presentation, they don't listen to him or her. And they want to be listened by others and don't listen to others. So here I use a game and to improve one of the 21st century skills which is communication and good listening, active listening. Nelson Mandela is a great leader. Nelson Mandela is, I'm saying is, not was, even though he died, because his influence is still going on. He's a great leader. One day, a journalist asks him a question. What's the reason behind being a great leader, a universal leader? All countries do believe that you are a leader. Nelson Mandela said, when I was a child, I used to go with my dad, and my dad was one of the tribe members. I was a kid going with my dad. Every weekend, there was a meeting by the, the, I mean, the tribe members, and I used to go with my dad. They sat into a circle or like a circle and they were talking about the issues suggestions of the tribe and i observed every weekend i observed every weekend that my dad was the last to talk my dad was the last to talk he was listening and listening and listening to be a great leader you must be a good listener you should listen. So I want to improve this skill among my learners. I start with listen and draw. 
these are one of the two, or these are two, um, I mean, my trainees, they were practicing this game. Let me explain the instructions of the game. Look here, number one, you have to divide the class into two groups. If you have a small group, uh, sorry, a small class, two groups. Seven groups, seven. You have 14 students. If you have 30 or 40 students, you can divide the class into four groups. So 10, 10, 10, or five, five, five. Number two, you ask one student for each group to leave the room. So let's divide the class into two groups. Um, I'm going to ask each group, give me one leader, one representative, one coordinator, one presenter. And there are two, they come. They have to leave the classroom. They go outside the classroom, OK? Number three, the teacher draw a story on the board for the whole class to see. I'm going to draw a story and the two groups are just watching. I'm drawing and at the same time narrating the story. Good. For example, I'm going to draw a boat and there is a man who is going or a boy who is going to fish a big fish. So I'm going, I'm going to say like this. One day there was a boy sailing on a boat, a small boat, and the boy was fishing and he got a huge fish and they stop. That's it. Now, after three minutes, number four, I invite the two students to come. The two students, I, I'm going to give them two different markers. Red marker, the blue marker. Red group, the blue group. Now, the groups should talk, should explain, uh, should narrate, and the true representatives should listen. So in the beginning, I was talking and the groups were listening. After that, the two representatives will come to draw, listen, and the two groups will talk. So number five, they should listen to their group and draw at the same time. The first to finish drawing is the winner. And you will see that there is much fun, much learning, and we improve students' skill, which is active listening. If you want, I can show you a video about this game, but if we don't have enough time, we can move on to the next um, slide. Yes, please. Yeah, sure. Well, we still have, let's say, uh, three, four minutes before. Um... OK, so sh shall I stop sharing and um, share the video? Yeah, sure. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. So let me see just one second. All right. So is this full screen? Yes. Yes. Can you hear the sound? Should I start? Now. Yeah. Great. So yeah, it's less than one minute. Just have a look at this game. So let me stop again sharing. OK, just one second. Great. Now I want just to, um, to tell me about the atmosphere of the classroom when we used lesson and draw. How was the atmosphere of the classroom? 
Um, sorry, Hussein, can you just try the, the full screen? It's not full screen now. So let me try again. OK. Yes, what about now? Yes, please. Uh, not yet. Not yet. I would be reading some of the comments here. Till you shared the full screen. So, uh, Musa is saying that it seemed very engaging. Okay. Mo uh, is saying that the atmosphere is happy and fun. All right. Okay, we can see the full screen now. Great. Yes, uh, so, we, yeah. Is saying that they were happy and all participating. Great. So look yeah. here. Now, listen and draw game improves number one, students active listening. We want our students to be active listeners. Number two, students creativity. They are narrating the story. They are drawing, drawing. This is creativity. Now, Number three, students collaboration. They are working together for one goal, which is helping their representatives. And number four, students critical thinking. There is a problem, which is they have to solve the situation, which is draw, drawing a good picture, but at the same time listening. So these are the aims behind this game, and it's very helpful. OK, shall we move on to the next one? Hey, yes, let's carry on. Another game, it's my game that I designed. It's called Maestro Game. This is one of the most um, traditional Moroccan bands in the south of Morocco. Yeah, and this is the, the maestro, the man, who is going to act, dance, uh, sing, etc. The Maestro Game. So let me explain the game. So here, um, I, I give my students this, this song. And I put them into groups of four. And they said, you are four. And each group should have a maestro, a leader. OK. And before I'm going to assign who is going to be the maestro, I'm going to be the maestro. So the teacher is going to model the game. Now, the maestro game, I'm going to read like this. Please, just Follow the instructions. Up, 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 clap your hands. Sing with us for Morocco. Oh, my beloved country. Oh, my beloved country. Morocco, Morocco. On my right all the day. On my left all the night. Oh, my beloved country. Oh, my beloved country. Morocco, Morocco. I just read it. Now, I'm going to play the maestro game. When I sing, after I finish, students should repeat after me. For example, up, 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 clap your hands, sing with us for Morocco. Up, 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 clap your hands, sing with us for Morocco. Oh, my beloved country. Oh, my beloved country. Morocco, Morocco. On my right all the day, on my left all the night, on my right all the day, on my left all the night. Oh, my beloved country. Oh, my beloved country. Morocco, Morocco. Now, I tell my students to repeat after me. When I say up, 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 clap your hands. Sing with us. For Morocco, they will repeat. Can you please repeat after me? Okay. Up, 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 clap your hands, sing with us for Morocco. Repeat. Yes. Up, 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 clap your hands, up, up, sing with us. Oh, my beloved country. Oh, my beloved country. Repeat. Oh, my beloved country. Oh, my beloved country. Oh, my beloved country. Morocco, Morocco. Morocco, Morocco. 
Rasta. On my right all the day, on my left all the night, on my right all the day, on my left all the night. Repeat it. On my right, all the night. On my left, all the night. Very good. Oh, my beloved country. Oh, my beloved country. Morocco, Morocco. Repeat again. Oh, my beloved country. Thank you. Now, I played the maestro game. Thank you. You are very great. Good voices. You should participate in other competitions. You have very nice voices. I'm just having some fun with you. Great. Now, I tell my learners, I want you now to work into groups of five or six. And I want one maestro. The maestro is the one who is going to sing and the other members should repeat like I did as a teacher. I give them this exercise. Look here. Maestro game. Change the underlined words to compose a new song with a new rhythm. For example, they have to change what? Sing Morocco. Beloved country, beloved country. Morocco, Morocco. Right, the day. Left, night. Beloved country. For example, you can say, up, 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 clap your hands, dance with us for Algeria. These are just examples. Now, I would like some of you to change these words and to come up with a new song and a new rhythm of the song. And you will see that students enjoy a lot the game. Anyone to, to change the words? Well, let's give you one minute to think about it. Okay, I see that everyone is enjoying this game here. German is already trying to uh, change, the, change the words and he uh, wrote Algeria. Wonderful. Maybe you want to try it, Jamal, with, uh, with Algeria? Or maybe Zinina wants to say something. She's raising her hand. Yes. Yeah, hi, it's uh, Janana, like Jenny. Janana, uh, I'm from Serbia. Hi. Okay, I can sing. <laughs> I can change it within while singing. Um, okay. Go ahead, please. You wanted another beat. <laughs> so we can try a little blues something. Uh, because with my kids, with my students, because I teach mostly kids, I usually sing during classes, so it's normal. Up, 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 clap your hands, dance with us for classmates. Oh, my beloved spring oh my beloved spring so i don't know if i should be like stopping two lines after two lines hey chief you can um i mean change add whatever you like okay so uh, i have to do the whole song <laughs> yeah um, i'm sorry <laughs> but it was uh, very nice by the way yeah Okay, so I, I'll let someone else, or can I just read it? <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, any other volunteers? Can I? Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. do. Hello, I'm, I'm Marina from Romania. Welcome, Marina. <laughs> nice to, to meet you there. Um, I was thinking to design this song uh, for the birthday of our children, of our students. I think it, it is a good opportunity to make everybody involved. So it should be something like up, 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 dance with us. Oh, my talented, I don't know, Michael. 
uh, all my talented students, and the name should be Michael. Then maybe we can switch the directions on my left, on my right. Oh, my talented student, Michael. Clap your hands for Michael. Oh, my talented student, Michael. And here maybe all, all the morning, all the afternoon. Oh, my talented student, Michael. Happy birthday, Michael. Wonderful. Yeah, very interesting. So as you see here, this game will create a very nice atmosphere, especially it's the first time you meet your learners. You have to help them feel at ease, feel comfortable, feel motivated, and the coming days they will love coming to your classes. Now, what are the, the, the purpose behind the game? Number one, there is creativity because students are going to create their own new songs creating new words. Number uh, two, there is communication because they are working into groups of four. So they are communicating about changing, modifying, adding new words. New, um, uh, as some of you said, beats or rhythm. And collaboration, the 21st century skills, collaboration, communication, creativity. So it's very important and I use, I use it not only with my students, but also with my trainees and it works. So my question, did you like this game? Is there something interesting about it? Yeah, Hussein, I can confirm that they love it. Thank you. Great. So let's move on to the third one. Or the, the last one, I guess, yeah. The last one is Kahoot game. Because we don't have to use all the time board games but we can use online games. And I know the majority of you um, have used or have an idea about Kahoot game. We are teaching internet generation. Our students, they use the phone all the time. So it's good to encourage our learners to use the smartphones effectively for learning purposes. So I used with them the Kahoot game. So let me stop sharing and play the game again with you. Just one second. Yes, please. Uh, can you see my slide? Do you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yes, so this is yes, Kahoot. Yeah. It's very easy, just you can Google it, okay? And they give you all the necessary information if you want. This is my Kahoot and I have designed several, I mean, uh, activities. And I'm going to use now one of the activities which is uh, Gifts of Youth. Gifts of Youth. So let's try to play this game. Just one second. Okay, now I want you please to use your smartphones. So here we have different activities, approach and methods, teaching grammar communicatively, listening skills, this in Arabic, Jacobson's translation, chances. These are my activities that I created. Simple past versus past perfect, what is your gift? I'm going to use this one, gifts of youth. So let's play. I'm going to click on play. I'm going to teach this one for my learners. I'm going to use the classic option. Now, please, I want you to use your smartphones or even your computer, www.kahoot.it. www.kahoot.it, then we have the code. The code is 1938759. Is it clear so far, please? Yes, please, do you hear me? Yes, it's yes. clear. Wonderful. So please, uh, www.kahoot. So we have Mosisu, wonderful, dot .it. Yes. Hinda, okay. so two. Yes, two are already, okay, they have already right. joined. Hind, no. Lindush, Umayma, Nabila. Great. Uh, 
أم كي سارة أندرين جمال لطفي سعيد great we still have more than 80 participants to join So shall we start? Okay, I can see that already we have 21 participants. Yeah, we can have more than 100, by the way. We can use large classes. The number is increasing. Yes, we can start. So let's get started. I'm sorry for those who couldn't join us. So let's start. Now we have to click on the right color. The right color stands for the right answer. So a young person who is willing to take risk. Okay, so I think that they need to be um, quick in answering the yeah, question. Yes. yes, very important. When you click on the right answer quickly, you get a lot of points. If you get the right answer, but you did not click quickly on the right color or button, you will not get a lot of points. So here, number one, quickly, and number two, the right answer. These are the two very important elements to get a lot of points. Next, so here we have Tarek, Hamadi, number one, Musa, Sarah, Mujadi, Musa, etc. So basically they give you the first five members. Next. So a young person who has the mental ability to form ideas. Vital, strong, talented, imaginative. Yes. Wonderful. So the right answer is? Uh, imaginative. imaginative. Yes. Good. It was given nine participants. Tarak is also, okay. Tarak is losing his place. So Mo. Good, so it's talented, okay. And what is very interesting about Kahoot, there are colors. Children, students love colors. There is the sound, music, and they like the sound, okay. Very interesting for visual and auditory learners. Next. Oh, there's a change, uh, Gisam, yes? Yes, I see that Sarah is in the first place now. Great, next. The next question, a young person who has the ability to generate new methods or innovative ideas is creative, passionate, active or vigorous. So quickly, guys. Creative, yes. Wonderful. 16 right answers. Sara, that is still the first. Great. Okay, a young person who is strong and active, ambitious, vital, strong and passionate. Okay, great. Sarah is still. Yes, wonderful. Next. A young person who wants to achieve his dreams is gifted, clever, ambitious, and adventurous. Wonderful. 
Wonderful. Sarah Seal the first. Next. Yes. Young person who is physically strong and has good health is self reliant, serious, vigorous, or active. Let's see if Sarah will again make it. Good. Great, Sarah. Oh, no. Oh. It's not. There is a change. Wonderful. Yeah. So there is competition, motivation. Very interesting. It's me, Vilodie. All right, nice. Next. So young person who is active and has energy is which of these four answers? Okay, he is energetic and say it. Wow. Great. Very interesting. Next. Young person who has the courage, fearless disposition to do something is weak, lazy, determined, or audacious. Okay. Again, say it again. Wonderful. Next. The last question. The last okay. one. Person who is so excited and so interested in doing something. Which of the four adjectives is the the four adjectives is the the, the right answer? Great. So let's see now the winner. Yes, Jisam, what do you think? Yeah. Who is the winner? Can you guess? Okay, I don't know. Maybe still say it. We'll so see. Let's see. Basically, what I do with my classes, some suspension, I say the winner of today's competition or game is. Da -da -da -da. Number three. I see you, number three. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Musa is the second one. The third one is. Oh. Congratulations, guys. Now let me stop sharing again. One second. We were receiving some of the answers here on the chat thread, so the others were participating in the chat thread here. Wonderful, you that's did. nice. So can you see my full screen? Not yet? Not yet. What about now? Uh, not yet. Oh, I have to stop share again. Yes, what about now? Yes, it's nice. Yes. Yes, so here um, it's very important to have variety in your classes. Don't all the time uh, teach in offline games, board games. You can use also online games uh, because variety is the, um, is the key to have a successful lesson. And here indirectly you are promoting the use of smartphones positively. 
for learning purposes. There is interaction, communication, etc. Okay, great. So let's see here. The last part here, I want you to watch the video. There's a very interesting video about Kahoot, the same game. And now choose the right answer. Yes, please, uh, if you Sam, can you please read these? Points? Yes. Okay, so choose the right answer. One, the purpose of the game. Two, or A, is it is it to review or to practice or to explain? Yes. Okay, I'm good. Can you continue? Uh, I read them all. Yes. Okay. The second one: teacher and students participate, but participation. Well, it requires a high TTT. That means teaching talk, uh, teacher talking time, or low STT. That means students talking time, or high STT. The third one: learning environment. Is it positive, fun, or both? The last one, which skills does the game aim to improve? Is it collaboration, competition, or both? So please try to remember these questions because you are going to watch a video and based on the video, you should answer these or you choose the right answer. Okay. Okay, great. So let me share again the video. Just one second. So can you see the full screen? Yes. yes. So let's get started. There is no sound. Yeah, yes, you just need to watch the video without uh, no need for uh, the sound. All right, great. So based on this video, I want you to answer these questions. Did you hear the sound or not? 
No. No, there was. No, no sound. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry because you couldn't hear. Just to see the interaction between the teacher, students, and students, students. So let me share again the slides. Just a second. All right. Yes, uh, are they full screen? Uh, not yet. What about now? Yes, yes. Right. So the purpose of the game to review, to practice or to explain. Okay, yes. let me see. Let me see your answers on the chat thread. Okay, Larissa saying um, A and B. Okay, we did this saying practice. And uh, high STT for the second one, positive for, and both for question number four. Yeah, so it's uh, basically because you couldn't hear the sound, so it's to review after we finish. We had a review about the simple past. Number two. Number two. Okay, let's see your answers for question for the second one. Teacher and students participation. Uh, what have you noticed? A high TTT or low STT or high STT? Okay, they said high STT. That means high student talking time. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, because the teacher was just guiding, helping, encouraging learners, and they were working together, okay, discussing, debating, um, helping each other. Number three. Okay, learning environment. Was it A, positive, B, fun, or C, both? Uh, okay. C, both. Was team said both, Mo, both, Abderazak, Firiel, yeah, they agree about both. Yes. Yeah, there is, uh, it's, uh, the environment was very positive, but at the same time, we had much fine. Great. Number four. Okay. Number four. Which skills does the game aim to improve? Collaboration, competition, or both? Okay. Samia, Wasim, Friyal. If they all agree about both, they all agree about both. Great. Yes, but in my classes, I don't. I, I opt for A. I, I want or um, which skill does the game aim to improve? In my classes, I do my best to improve the collaboration and not competition. Yes, they are competing, but my purpose is to improve students' collaboration skills. They are going to compete or compete, yeah. But at the same time, it's not the purpose, it's not competition, but my purpose is collaboration. Okay, is it clear so far? Okay. Great. So let's move on to the last one, the conclusion. So please, never forget, once using fun engaging activities in EP classes, to ask and answer very important questions. Question number one, because sometimes, yeah, I have got a good game. Yeah, I have a nice activity. Yeah, I have got a very engaged activity. No, to have it is not a good question. But the most important question is number one, what game to use exactly? Number two, how to use it? Using the magic hand, demonstration, clear instructions, the purpose behind that, okay, the objectives. When to use it, before, after, or as a review at the end of the lesson, and why use it? Do you use it to, to promote um, collaboration skills, competition skills, creativity, critical thinking, etc.? So these are very important questions to ask when using games in A-field classes. Thank you. And these are some of the useful websites if you want to get very interesting games. All right, thanks a lot. Okay. Please, can you just uh, share it again? Because we they uh, could not see the conclusion and uh, the last slide. 
they are not visible for the participants. Now it's visible? Uh, not yet. The conclusion, okay. Do you want you to repeat again, sharing, stop and share again? Please, it can, yes. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna reach again. Now, can you see? Okay, it takes, let's say, a few seconds to synchronize. What about now? Not yet? Yeah, not yet. Okay. Jana Sahara, we are raising your hand. Do you want to say something before we wrap up? No, sorry, it's, it's, it was a mistake. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, what about now? You can see? Yes. Yes, we can see the computer. Yes, it's working. Yeah. All right. So, as I said, uh, um, it's, uh, many teachers, they just ask about the game. But they forget to ask very interesting question is what game to use exactly for which class, for which level, for which purpose, for which lesson, and then how to use it. We talked about the magic hand, demonstration, modeling, uh, giving clear instructions, the objective behind the game, and when to use it. We have three stages. We can use it in the very beginning or in the middle as practice or by the end of the lesson for a review. Okay, but the majority opt for reviewing. Um, the lesson by using games. And another very important question is why? Why use it? If you are going to use it for fun, I'm going to tell you, I'm sorry, I don't agree with you. We don't use games for fun. The fun is the means, is the way. And behind that, there is learning. Okay, thank you. Can I share the next slide about the, the, the useful websites? Yes, please proceed. Right. Uh, it's not, let's say, shared yet. My slides? No, not yet. Uh, the useful websites. Now you can see. No, not yet. So let me stop sharing and share again. Exactly. Yes. yes. What about now? Yes, we can see it now. Wonderful. OK, so please, if you have any question, you are most welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we can see the list of the useful websites you are sharing on our screen. Yes, my pleasure. So before we wrap up, let me read some of, let's say, the comments here. Uh, Jamila is saying that it was extremely interesting. So we have some interesting feedback here. Sarah is saying it was a very interesting and beneficial webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Karima is saying thank you so much for sharing the beneficial websites with us. We appreciate your efforts. And we see Mokay saying thank you and they appreciate your efforts. Thank you, Widad. Monali is saying um, thank you to share your expertise. Nui said that it was fruitful. Really interesting. Faria said it was helpful, interesting, amazing. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you for your very positive feedback. Thanks a lot. I also like the way you interacted. It was very interesting asking interesting questions, good ideas and sharing.
Thank you so much, Hussein Khasaraz, for this amazing presentation. Thank you to our participants too. No, it wouldn't oh, be successful without your uh, Thank presence. You. Yeah. It's Sam, it's my pleasure. Hello, sir. Yes. Hello. It is Zach. Uh, yes, I got a question for you, sir. Okay, yes, quickly, please. please. Yes, sure. Uh, for what level these methods are, I mean, uh, truly effective for, I mean, uh, primary school uh, students or for middle school, high school, university, or, or all of them? Yes, very interesting question. Yes, you mean these games? You mean the games? Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yes, you can use the games with all ages. For example, couscous game, you can use with children. Okay, using simple sentences like favorite food, favorite city, favorite color. You can use them with advanced learners by um, using some words like um, titles of your favorite books, titles of your favorite films, something like that, okay. Okay, thank you so much, clear. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, okay. Um, if you still have any questions, you can still send them uh, in the chat thread or via our email and we will get back to you after the webinar. Thank you, Hussein. Thank you so much again. So thank you uh, guys for attending our 24th webinar. And we hope to see you in our upcoming uh, webinars and events. Uh, for the recording of this uh, webinar, it will be, we're going to uh, post the recording on our Facebook page. And we are going to send it to you via email as well. 